When my kids were little, and they love it when I tell stories about them, the privilege of being a pastor's kid. So when my kids were little, uh, I had a group of friends that had kids the same age, which is really important when you're raising kids, right? To be able to, to have a village, to have a group of people. And we would laugh and say things like, I know why some animals eat their young. Or it's a good thing God made kids really cute, right? Isn't that the truth? You know, some days, if you're, if you're a parent, some days, weren't you more like Homer Simpson than Joan Cleaver? You know, just, you just want to, gosh, you love him so much, just so much. Now, you don't even have to have kids to know this, right? There is somebody in your life that you love dearly, that is your ride or die, that you want to spend your life with your spouse, your best friend, your kids. I have no idea who it is, but whoever it is, you would probably give your life for them, and they drive you absolutely batty sometimes. Isn't that, isn't that the truth? I was reading a meme the other day, and, and a, a gal asked her mom uh, what was the secret to their long marriage, and the mom said, we never hated each other on the same day. <laughs> so sometimes the people that we absolutely adore drive us crazy. But you know what? Love, y'all are nodding like, oh, yeah. So, you know. <laughs> I don't know if we got some counseling that's going to go on after church or what's happening, but, but uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. But love, love remains because all of those frustrations and annoyances, they are temporary. They are temporary compared to the love that is there between you. Now that love, it can't fix everything. It can't fix those frustrations and make them go away or never happen. And that love doesn't guarantee complete and total relationship bliss, but the love does remain. And the love we have for our families, the love we have for our kids, the love we have for our spouses and partners, for our friends, that is nothing compared to the love that God has for us. Let's hear from Ephesians this morning. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with the power through his spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love that is Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Now we all have these kind of records, these kind of loops that play in our head that tell us who we are and what we're good at and, and, and the ones that we hear over and over and over. And some of them are fantastic and some of them are not fantastic. But we have these records that play over and over in our heads, especially in times of stress. And so what do yours tell you about yourself? Where do those songs come from? Do they lift you up or do they tear you down? Most of us have a mix of both, right? Most of us have a mix of things that tell us good things about ourselves and tell us awful things about ourselves. And those awful things, those aren't true anyway, by the way. 
but we hear them nonetheless. And, and so with some of those loops playing in our head, it's hard to imagine, it's hard to remember sometimes how greatly God loves us. We can compare it to our love for our kids, for our friends, for our spouse, for our family, but really it is so much bigger than that. We have a hard time imagining something that vast, so bigger than what we've already experienced. If we've been in situations, if we've had experiences in which we've been very much unloved, it can, it can be hard to imagine that a love like that actually really does exist in the world. Where the people who were supposed to love us didn't do as well as they could have or they should have. Where the people who were supposed to care for us rejected us or abandoned or hurt us in ways uh, where we were supposed to be safe with them. It's hard to believe in unconditional, limitless love if we've been told or we've been taught we're not worthy of love for any reason. And, and why is it that those kinds of loops, those kinds of records can play the loudest in our heads? Now see, there's this cyclical relationship between our beliefs about God and our beliefs about ourselves that exist within all of us. Do we believe that God is loving and a source of healing? Or do we believe that God is judgmental and ready to give out punishment? So how we understand relationships, how we've experienced or not experienced loving relationships from our earliest days until right this moment influences our beliefs about God. So if we've been loved well, our needs have been provided for, if we've been able to develop trust with the people who have taken care of us, we transfer all of those, those good, good feelings, those good beliefs onto God. And if we've been neglected or abandoned or hurt by those who are supposed to care for us, we have a tendency to see God in those ways as distant and cold, unfeeling, judgmental. Now, theologically, we call that an embedded theology. We don't even realize what we believe or why. We just know that it's there, that it's a part of us, that, that we've absorbed these beliefs from everyone and everything around us. And this prayer today in Ephesians is saying, in part, that our embedded belief about God, the one that sits at our very core and influences everything we believe. It influences everything in our lives. What we think of others, what we think of ourselves, how we make decisions, that it is rooted most steadfastly within us. That belief is the unlimited love of God for us. That is our go-to natural position. That is what it's supposed to be, that very deep within us. We know more than anything else that God loves us because that's how we're created to know and to hear that love. But sometimes we have these other voices, we have these other experiences that say otherwise, and it's hard to get rid of them and hold on to that natural, created, uh, rooted love within us. So this prayer is to act as a counterweight to those feelings, to those experiences. To know that we are rooted and grounded in God's love, it doesn't mean that we're perfect. I mean, wouldn't that be nice? I'm just saying. It doesn't mean that we get everything we want. I mean, that would be really nice, right? That would be really nice. This understanding that God is accomplishing abundance within us has nothing to do with stuff. 
right? It's not about accumulating stuff or money or treasure because we believe in God and God blesses us and God loves us. That's prosperity gospel. We don't get into that here. That is not our deal. It's knowing that God's love for us, God's love for you is so extravagant that it is worth more than anything you have ever seen or felt. It is this extravagance which is the ultimate healing power of the whole world. It is this extravagance that encourages us in our times of weakness and doubt and frustration and fear and grief and all those other hard, dark times. It is this extravagance of love that encourages us to go outside of ourselves and care for the people around us. It seems almost impossible to start understanding the incomprehensible, the entirety of God's love for us. How do we even begin? How do we even begin? Especially if we have those records rotating in our head about how we're not loved. We might get a hint in the middle of this prayer I pray that you have the power to comprehend with all the saints. Who are all the saints? I'm looking at them. All this, anybody ever call you a saint before? That's okay. You can be called a saint, you and everybody who has come before you. It is the community of God, all of the saints. That's that's who we are. We learn to love together. We learn uh, to be in community together. We pray to, to love like God loves together. Being in community can be messy. There's no denying that, right? It can be weird. It can be awkward. It can be messy. It can be hard, but we try, and we try again, and we learn, and and sometimes we get it right, and that is a beautiful moment. Sometimes we get it wrong, so you know what we get to do? We get to try again. We get to try again to love one another, and we get to keep trying until we learn what it means to love God, to love one another, to love ourselves. And if there are some sounds in our head that tell us that we're not worthy of that love, then we get to come back together and hear again that that's simply not true and hear a new song that is based on God's truth, that every single person, that you sitting here right now, that you listening online right now, you are worthy of God's love, and there is not anything in this world that can ever change that. And we don't keep it to ourselves either. We get to go out and invite others into learning about God's love together. We share what we know because it feels so good, because it lifts us up so much, because it heals the broken little bits of us that have been wounded in other experiences and situations, and we want other people to know that healing too. Now, short history lesson is very brief, I promise. Julian of Norwich was a religious figure who lived in the late 14th century. I'm sure everybody here has heard of her, right? She had a series of visions which she wrote down. She is credited with being the first woman author in the English language. So that right there, that's pretty spectacular and uh, pretty amazing that it has Uh, that we even know about her. And it's pretty amazing given the, the time and place she lived. And so at the conclusion of her writing, she wrote down about her visions. All right, now stay with me. I promise this, this is gonna end well. You're not gonna, you're not gonna feel like you're in school. She wrote down, uh, and, and expanded on her visions. And at the, at the end of her writing, she said this. From the time these things were first revealed, I had had often wanted to know what was our Lord's meaning. It was more than 15 years after that that I answered in my spirit's understanding. You would know our Lord's meaning in this. Know it well. Love was his meaning. Who showed it to you? Love. What did he show you? Love. Why did he show it? 
for love. Hold on to this and you will know and understand love more and more. And you will not learn or need to know anything else ever. And the greatest honor that we can give Almighty God is to live gladly because of the knowledge of his love. So let's hear that paraphrase. For those of us who need to hear it again and maybe again and again and again. You want to know God's meaning? Know it well? Love is God's meaning. Now hear that? What's God's meaning? There we go. Who showed it to you? What did God show you? Why did God show it to you? For? For love. Hang on to that love with both hands, my friends, and never let it go. Because there is nothing that you will ever hear again that is more important than that. That is love ever. We honor our God by living first through love. Amen. Let us join together this morning for our community prayer. Almighty God, by your spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Help us to see your presence burning in the hearts of others. Grant that we may be united in a fellowship of love and prayer. Give us the courage to pick up our cross and respond to the needs of the world. Give us the stamina to follow you. Be your hands and heart in the world. Enable us to witness to your grace and mercy. May your love strengthen those who need strength today. May those struggling from illness feel your presence in ways that bring them hope. Be with those who are grieving, God. Give them the comfort they need today. We know there are many who struggling, who are struggling, who don't have enough to eat, who are worried about what they do today, where they lay their head tonight, who live in places that don't feel safe. Prod us, God, to offer more than prayers, but also ways that show your real love to them and reflect your goodness and mercy and grace to the world around us. We bow our hearts before you, God. You are the creator of everything we see in heaven and on earth, and we are grateful for you and your love. Amen.